Uh, welcome to the another episode of Ecom Stories with Raja. And today I have an amazing guest with me. Uh, before going to introduce her, uh, I uh, I actually heard a lot of stuff from the female point of view. Like I am a female, so that's why I can't do this. I can't do this. Uh, today I am going to introduce uh, a very good friend of mine and uh, the real entrepreneur. Uh, hey Ashley, how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. It's a gorgeous morning, so I'm so glad we get to do this. Awesome. So, Ashley, uh, first of all, uh, we would like to uh, get some kind of the introduction of you for those who doesn't doesn't know you. Uh, like you, for as per my information, the hidden rule expert, the e-commerce consultant, and the author as well. Uh, but that will be awesome if you can give us some kind of uh, introduction about your initial schoolings and then till like how did you get into the e-commerce business and till now uh, like a brief introduction that will be awesome for us. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's technically a very long story. So I'll try to keep it as short and sweet as possible. Um, so hi everybody, I'm Ashley Armstrong, the hidden rules expert, and I help established product companies find millions of dollars that they're leaving on the table by leveraging larger the years. But I published six books about my children for my children and got a bestseller from that series. And it really opened my eyes to the power of the online platform. Like this was over a decade ago, <laughs> you know, when things were really kind of just starting to get going. Um, and then from there, I tried to manufacture my own product. Well, I was manufacturing my own product. I was growing bacteria in my home and creating probiotic drinks way before you could even get probiotic drinks at Whole Foods or anything along those lines. So I spent a year trying to figure out how to like mass produce that and sell it. And everyone wanted like 150 grand from me. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. I didn't know what I was doing. And luckily enough, I did end up finding some online courses. Uh, again, this is like 10 years ago or before. <laughs> um, and then from learning between all these different platforms and programs and working with mentors, I'm a very big believer in paying to have the best person in your corner as best as possible. And from there, it just kind of grew. I figured out how to manufacture products. I built a seven figure business. And I partnered with really big industry experts in the marketing and Amazon space for about over five years. And then from there, I was just working with thousands of students and software tools and strategies. And, and now I'm an advisor for established product companies and helping them and training their teams on, you know, the hidden rules of the marketplaces and how to properly position your product lines to sell online. So that's kind of like in a nutshell for the most part, but, uh, now I'm really focusing on helping the second step for as um, product sellers. So as you know, there's tons of programs and courses that teach you how to manufacture product, get it up on Amazon or your own website, which is great, but they focus on a profitable product. Every time you want to make some more money, you need to find another profitable product and you have to keep like repeating and like reinventing yourself in your business. And there's no clarity. There's no branding behind it. There's no one niche market. And so we've actually created a program to help individuals who were and who have experience selling products. They've seen success, but now they're tired of having to reinvent themselves and they want to be a legitimate brand. So I'm like the second step of helping sellers do that. So that's kind of what we've been working on over the last, you know, over a decade. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's a, that's a huge thing. So the very first question is that for the, like most of the viewers are actually from uh, like, they are the beginners of the, uh, in the Amazon stuff or in the online industry or uh, some of the advanced level sellers as well so we will try to cover both of them so the most of the questions i actually received from the sellers uh, that is related to the product so what do you suggest okay uh, like uh, what kind of product is profitable in uh, your eyes and what are the like main uh, things or main factors we should keep in our uh, like when we are uh, Searching that particular product, like what are the factors? If that are uh, present in the product, that product seems to be a profitable product. Wow. Okay. So really, at, at the end of the day, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm really trying to help sellers break out of just doing profitable products because it's a legitimate business. It allows you to scale and grow. Um, it also allows you to do easier marketing and positioning and moving customers around your ecosystem, which is, of course, our online platforms between our social media sites, our own websites and the third party sites that we're on. So if we're just going to look at just products themselves and take away the branding off the table, 
there's a million flipping products <laughs> and niches. No one can really tell you what's going to be a good one or not going to be a good one, to be quite honest with you. But what I do want to point out at the end of the day is a lot of times, a lot of profitable products can be a trending product that has a very short lifespan. Perfect example, fidget spinners <laughs> or like pet rocks where you painted a rock with your pet. I don't know if you ever saw that, but we did that as a kid. And those are really amazing um, products that if you happen to get onto that train in the very beginning, leverage the crap out of it. I have one friend, get this, this is absolutely hilarious. You're gonna love this. I had one friend, this is probably about eight years ago, kind of like when like the online selling really started getting going. And so what they did is they took a box of Cheerios cereal, the little tiny like, little circle your donut things, whatever, put 10 of them into a little Ziploc bag and put like a tiny little like, top on it and called them donut seeds because mm -hmm. it looked like little miniature donuts they sold a couple million dollars of donut seeds <laughs> which was literally just taking cheerios cereal throwing it in the bag it's a gag gift it was supposed to be for fun um and so they they jumped on that gravy train people love gag gifts and, you know people still do like gag gifts are still a really actually a great product line they're seasonal but yeah they sold like two million dollars of someone you know a cheerio <laughs> <laughs> basically so sometimes don't really know what a profitable product can be but really at the end of the day when we are looking to sell something online especially if you're new and you're a beginner you know there's a few requirements which you know I'm not talking nothing that I'm gonna say te technically is new but you want to find some that's small lightweight not on the body not in the body the least amount of liability as possible um, once you start getting into FDA related products or things that are consumable and things of that nature you have to have really good liability insurance and a lot of people think that when they are buying um consumable products or ingestible products or products from the skin when you are getting a manufacturer say in the united states to make it for you the manufacturer has their own liability insurance only if there's a defect in the product and a lot of product sellers don't realize that if a customer complains after they buy the product, they're no longer, they're not covered by the manufacturer if there's a complaint or a lawsuit or anything along those lines. So that's why we always try to keep it small, lightweight for obviously shipping and for storage fees, and then not in the body or on the body. So we can limit the amount of liability that could possibly come back on us. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's kind of like the first things that we definitely want to be looking at, um, you know, and staying out of anything that happens to need extra certificates or whatnot. And again, just because it's paperwork and it's just more liability and whatnot. Um, and that's really, really, really want to focus on. <clears throat> and again, a lot of products are trending. And if you happen to be doing your market research and you see there's a whole bunch of other people who are doing the exact same thing, or there's a lot of products that are quite similar, but the very small differentiating factor, I highly recommend that you never you don't go into that market unless you have a very big email list or a social media following or you're an influencer yourself because you're just you're really just competing against whoever has the largest ad budget at this very moment in time to get people in front of their listings because there's nothing really different between your red, you know, cover case thing compared to the other person's red or black cover case thing like there's no way to differentiate yourself um so yeah so there's just those few little things again and it's not necessarily anything new <laughs> a lot of people do okay. know that but yeah. yeah so the next two questions i have uh number one is that like how do you see the amazon uh in the coming future like in 2021 like how do you see amazon is uh growing and what are the uh, like changings you are expecting or uh, in the in the entire Amazon uh, feed and the second question uh, is also related to that uh, like what exactly you are seeing in the Amazon USA marketplace in terms of competition like do you suggest to go in the Amazon USA or other marketplaces like for the USA sellers what do you suggest <clears throat> yeah oh my gosh okay so there's there's lots of things that kind of go in there so um... Oh my, I'm just like, okay, what was the first, you're going through so many questions, like, what was the first question again? Ah. <laughs> okay, so if we're, how do, you, how do you see the Amazon globally? Amazon space. Yeah, so, you know, Amazon is the largest platform in the world. Everyone kind of knows that. They've done a very, very good job of just totally capitalizing on this online shopping and providing the customer service that people as the shoppers love. Easy returns, easy checkouts, you know, easy, you know, all of that stuff is very, very easy. And so even when the pandemic hit, there was a boost, like there was a 60% boost just from when the pandemic started before we even hit Prime, which of course Prime Day was later this year, right? 
So even just seeing that very small like boost, which we know year over year over year, it's constantly growing. Um, so being on that platform is crucial for every single business, no matter if you're small or big. And even if your product isn't necessarily an Amazon worthy type of product, you have to be there for social proofing because you know, at the end of the day, how many times do you go into like whole foods or into a different store and you pick up a supplement on the, you know, on the shelf or a protein powder or whatever. And you're like, is this any good? And you go straight to Amazon and you look up for the reviews and you know, like going through it. So Amazon is a search engine just as much as it is a place to buy things nowadays. So, you know, when it comes to what is Amazon turning into, it's turning into a search engine. It's turning into like full on social proof. Um, and of course it is a distribution channel that you should not take lightly. Um, there's two different ways of looking at it. You can just be on there just for the positioning and the social proof and not use it as a main distribution channel. Like you don't put a huge amount of marketing effort and dollars behind it. So that's kind of like option number one. And then option number two is really putting a whole year's worth of strategy and uh, investment of time and energy into reutilizing and leveraging the platform for everything that it has. Because if you're going to go, you know, fishing in the biggest pond, you want to make sure that you're moving your customers that you're finding on Amazon from there over into your social profiles. So it's really a great place to technically fish for new customers and then introduce them to your ecosystem that I was talking about earlier. And that's really what the future is going to be on the Amazon platform. Plus, there is a whole new market that did not exist before that is now starting to open up. And this is the really crazy part that most people have no idea about or they're not even thinking about it. Because of the lockdown and because of the pandemic, doesn't even doesn't matter where you are in the world. Like this is totally relevant for every Amazon platform across the globe is that the senior population they don't necessarily do electronics. They never really they don't really trust their credit cards online. Like even my grandmother still sends me a check. She won't do she won't do any um, internet uh, banking or anything. She just doesn't trust it. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. You don't trust it. Thank you for the check. Um, you know, for the kids or whatnot. But the th fact of the matter is, is that exact same population that never shopped before online because they didn't trust it have to now because they're the exact same population that can't leave their home because they'll put themselves in danger. So there's a huge amount of this older population that was never buying online that is now starting to become part of the online shopper pool of people that we can sell to. So if you happen to have a product that is great for the elderly population in any way, shape or form, get prepared and making sure you're positioning yourself accordingly because those people, of course, need glasses. They can't read small text, you know, and things of that nature. And of course, you want to make the, the purchasing process for them as easy as possible. So that's what that's really where the Amazon marketplace is going to go. It's trusted. And we have this whole new demographic that's coming in that's going to be buying from us as well that we need to take into consideration and capitalize on it. So that part super, super, super exciting um, on that one. And then your second question was, you have to remind me of that one. That That is actually related to the, like, how do you see the Amazon USA marketplace and like the company? Compared to the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, so. Do you suggest any other marketplace? Uh, do you suggest any other marketplace? Like uh, Germany is booming and uh, some other marketplace to go. Uh, like, what are your thoughts on the uh, USA market in terms of competition? Yeah, well, you know, what? honestly, no matter where you are, there's going to be competition. Um, there's going to be more, there's going to be less. And depending on what your product is and where you are living in the world and where you're distributing from, you have to take all those things into consideration. So me just saying, go here and go there, that's never going to be the answer for anybody. You, you do have to, like, you have to do your research. And so obviously, I don't need to, you know, tell anyone this, that it, the US market is the largest one, which also means it has the most competition, but it also can mean that you can go from zero to hero really, really fast if you do the job right. And if you have a full strategy in place, you know, beforehand when you're launching your product. But really at the end of the day, like as a perfect example, I'm in Vancouver, Canada, so I'm Canadian and our Amazon marketplace up here is like peanuts. It is so tiny. There's more people in the state of California than there is in all of Canada. <laughs> so just think about that for a second. So when you when you do shop on Amazon Canada, like for myself, you know, uh, personally, because I'm either in my place in Mexico or I'm in my place in Canada. And so if I'm in Canada, I'm shopping from Canada site. If I'm in Mexico, I'm shopping from the USA site. And Canadian site has like hardly anything available. 
So I want you to take that into consideration when I say that, because when we're going to other platforms around the world, if they're newer, if they're smaller, it's so much easier to break in into the market and become a leader, a market leader, right? That's what we'd all dream of, what we'd all love. But really at the end of the day, there isn't one right or wrong platform to be on. It's more along the lines of not shooting yourself in the foot by growing too fast. And that's where I see a lot of people trying to do, because again, a lot of people are doing profitable products. They find a product that has a good profit margin. They throw it up there. They test it out. It's making some money. Okay, great. I want to make more money. Let's go find another profitable product (laughs) and do it again and do it again. And it's quite exhausting. Um, But at the end of the day, when you're looking at other marketplaces, you might be able to find holes in the market where it doesn't exist. So what you can very quickly and easily do is if you're like, okay, I have this product idea. So let's just say it's the, you know, my AirPod Pro case or whatever. It's a me too product as we like to call it because there's not too much you can do to it to differentiate it compared to (laughs) any other version, maybe two clips or a different type of clip or put it on a necklace. I don't freaking know. There's not too many things you can do to differentiate it. But if you think this might be like, "Mm, this might be a pretty good product and you're looking on the Amazon platform, you're saying, okay, well, this guy, he could do between like 8,000 to 15,000 revenue a month. That's a really good starter period to be in. Um, And then you're like, okay, so if I was going to expand into another marketplace, where does this product not exist? And you're looking for holes in the market. That's the easiest and best way to break in. And that's how I broke in with all of my product lines is looking for that hole in the market where, and now we have more Amazon platforms around the world to kind of do this digging. But back when I started over a decade ago, they didn't really exist. But what you're wanting to do, of course, is just find something where there's a lot of um, search results for it. There's a lot of demand for it. You're seeing a lot of really great um, testimonials, reviews, and whatnot in the U.S. market. And then you're going to take that market research and compare it to, okay, let's go to UK. Okay, let's go to Australia. Let's go. Let's go to like wherever you want to go to, you know. Um, and looking at the other platforms and seeing if one that product exists because if that product doesn't exist on there, or there's like only a few of them, you can very quickly get in there and just dominate it. But again. You know, when we're talking about profitable products, you always have to make sure you have an exit strategy built into your launch strategy. Mm-hmm. And so what I mean by that is, you know, again, things that, have a lifespan yeah. <laughs> and you don't yeah. want to go far past that lifespan. Yeah. So you want to get out, make yeah. your money and get out before things come crumbling down. <laughs> that concept is also related to the like first mover and the first mover advantage as well. Like if you are not the first mover, then you need to be a fast mover. That's this is how you can uh, achieve that particular uh, leadership in the in that particular market. Okay, so let's yeah. come. To the, yeah, let's come to the uh, next question from the hidden rule expert. Like what what in in your eyes? Like what are the top one, two, or three rules? The hidden rules uh, to be successful in Amazon. Oh, well, I think, you know, honestly, the, the software tool, there's a million flipping software tools nowadays compared to none. Like we, like when I got into the game, everything was by hand. <laughs> it was long yeah. and it was exhausting. So anyone who's coming in now, just thank the heavens that you do not have to spend the hours and hours and hours of like documents and spreadsheets yeah. that we had to do. So of course, Helium 10 is really, really amazing. Everyone kind of knows it. It's, it's, they've done a really great job of branding themselves and position themselves as a leader in obviously the Amazon marketplace. Managed by Stats is another great one. Um, Phil's a good friend of mine as well, Philip. And um, that just really pulls all the pertinent information together. So it's easily um, digestible. So you can give access to your accountant and people who are watching the numbers and seeing what's going on, you know, seeing how many coupon codes went out the door because Amazon doesn't really disclose this information. And if they do, which of course they do in a lot of cases, it's all over the damn place. Like how the hell do I find all this crap and make it as easy as possible for me? So managed by stats is, is of course a really, really great one, but another tool that, um, is not actually Amazon related that I would really like to shine some light on. There's a few of them. One of them is called usabilityhub.com. And a lot of, again, Amazon sellers, they don't have a a full branded business yet, which means they don't have a social following. They don't have an email list, but they aspire to have all of that. And you can definitely grow some of it with just profitable products. But again, the branding is how you create a solid foundation for your business. So if you don't have an audience, if you don't have people to talk to, to say, hey, 
what are you liking about this? What do you don't like about this? Do you prefer this in red, green, or gold? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you have no one to ask these questions to, your friends and family are never going to give you the proper business advice that you're looking for. So please don't go talk to your friends and family about <laughs> your business decisions because I promise you, you're not going to be satisfied with it. But Usability Hub is a platform where you can pay for however many responses you want from individuals who are on the back end. So it's a two-sided business um, model. So the front end, you can load up your website, you can load up your product listing, you can put your product pictures, you can put your slogans, you can literally put anything that you want an opinion on. And then you can choose to just have a broad range of people to answer. And the people who are answering, they're on the back end. And the back end people, they're getting paid technically to fill out your survey is really what it is for the most part. And they have to be open and they have to be honest and they have to be thorough with their responses, which is beautiful. But you can also break it down to the niche markets that you're trying to target as well. It does cost a little bit more, of course, but they can break it down to, I want to have answers from men who are between the ages of 18 and 25 mm -hmm. and who live in the United States or whatever it is that you're wanting to get the appropriate responses from the appropriate market. Mm -hmm. And so you can really sort of tailor what is actually working for you visually with your copy, with anything that you're basically trying to get done. And so if you don't have an email list, if you don't have an audience to ask these questions to, it's the perfect platform to get that, inform that insider information that you actually desperately need <laughs> before you really start launching anything. So Usability Hub is great for literally any business aspect under the sun. So that's a really, really great one. And I really highly recommend uh, product uh, sellers to start utilizing uh, platforms that are like that. Because, you know, we have to take our own emotion and our own love out of what it is that we're doing. Because we're too close to it, right? We need to have an outsider's point of view. Because no one gives a crap if we like what we're selling. <laughs> we need to make sure that people who are going to decide to give us their money, yeah. they like what we're going to sell. So start there. So that's kind of like number one that's off of um, Amazon. And another one that's also off of Amazon is called LivePlan.com. So mm -hmm. LivePlan.com. And that is a platform that helps you create a business plan. It auto populates everything, your pie charts, your percentages, it breaks it all down. So for people who want to truly have an organized business, if they want to find an investor for their business, if they want to go to their bank, even just to be organized themselves as a legitimate business, it's like really inexpensive. It's only like, I think it's like $20 a month to be on life plan. If I remember correctly, the pricing could be changed, but it's really inexpensive. And you just take all the information that you know about what it is you're trying to do and you just pop it in. And then by the time you're done, it literally populates an entire business plan for you so that you can really stay on track with what it is that you're doing. If you're going to be growing, if you're going to be going to new platforms, if you're going to be bringing on a new team member or whatever it is that you're needing to do. And so when you start setting yourself up with a solid foundation by using something like life plan that creates that business plan for you, you're going to feel great. You're going to feel like you're taking action. You're going to feel like you have a legitimate business and that you know exactly what you're going to be doing. But if you end up changing your mind or pivoting, that's okay. It doesn't matter. But the fact of the matter is, is that you put the time and the energy into looking at, you know, where the money's going, what the profit margins are going to be and everything else along those lines and how you're going to be expand uh, and what your timeline's going to look like. You know, things don't happen overnight. Things don't happen in three months. Things don't happen in six months a lot of times. So you have to be prepared that there's going to be a little bit of a timeline for you to accomplish your goals. And every goal, of course, lead, uh, leads into a new bigger goal. So having something like that is, is just really, really wonderful for anyone who's trying to be a business owner. Yeah. 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 Actually, a lot of clients come to me, and then they said, like uh, the like the Amazon seller, they said, like, uh, "Hey, Raja, we need like we need to build this, this, this." And I always try to uh, tell them, like, we need to make sure that like uh, this is a business, and it's take a time, like a tree, like which actually start from a seed and then become a plant and then become a tree, and then we are start getting the fruits. If someone yes, could, exactly. Yeah, if someone going to understand that particular thing, then definitely he's a businessman or a businesswoman. So th this is the one of the most important thing. Okay, so coming towards the last question, what are your plans uh, in the recording of like your uh, businesses and your organization, especially the hidden rule? And uh, what are your future plans for that? And uh, like, if you wanted to share some kind of uh, information regarding your uh, upcoming books or anything which is coming so that will be really awesome 
<laughs> oh my gosh, I have way too many things coming down the pipeline. So I don't know if we want to go there uh, between TV segments and all this other fun stuff. Um, but right now we actually have, uh, it's called HireHolidaysConversions.com is where you go. And it's specifically just a five day challenge for Amazon and e-commerce sellers on how to properly position their pictures to find the money they're leaving on the table and to drastically increase the conversion rates. Um, so that's like the fun thing that we're doing right now. We're trying to help people and give them the easy, actionable steps and tactics so they can really capitalize on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, and just of course the holiday season and just get themselves prepared to come into 2021. So higher holidays conversions is an awesome challenge. It's inexpensive, um, but it's action packed and full of amazing information. We are actually just ran one of them last week and the feedback is just is mind blowing. So that's kind of like number one. So if anyone wants to kick that off, we have another one starting in two weeks. Uh, you can definitely join and get on the wait list there. And then the other thing that we're doing when it comes to 2021, is I really want, again, as I said before, when we first started, I'm really wanting to focus on helping the profitable products niche people <laughs> to take them from constantly reinventing their business and position themselves over into being a legitimate brand. Um, and so that's um, hidden, um, um, hidden rules for e-commerce.com is, is where that one is. But that's really just a program. It's a 12 week program that we start the first week in January. It's gonna be taught live. Um, this might be the only time that I'm gonna be doing it. I'm not really too sure at this very moment in time, but basically, you know, I, you know, my clients, when I work with them, it's six months to 12 months worth of time. And I love working one-on-one -on -one with my clients, but you know, they pay a very large sum to keep that investment in house to train all their staff. But really at the end of the day, when I go back to the nuts and bolts of it, there's a huge open market, which is like, what's the next step for these profitable products people. And I, and I, you know, I've been helping these multi-million dollar clients for years and years and years, but these guys are kind of in the middle. They're not in the beginning. And they're not multi-million dollar clients that there's a whole bunch of them going like, where do I go? What do I do? How do I build a business that is sustainable and that lasts? And how do I, you know, make sure that my branding's on point and I have the appropriate niche market and my, my products are solving those problems. And how do I find my customer avatar? And how do I, you know, figure out what my promise is going to be? And how am I going to figure out what the true features and benefits are? And how am I actually going to differentiate myself? And so on and so forth. So like, we're really diving into the legitimacy of taking a product product into a uh, full on business so that one, they can have an exit strategy. So a lot of people are like, Oh, I like the idea of like selling products online. But the ones who are like, if I build this with proper foundation, I could turn around and sell this thing. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how people used to like build websites and then they turn around and flip it yeah. to make money? Like, you know, 10, yeah. well, it was like 15 ish, 20 years ago, almost like when they first started getting going. Well, of course, a lot of people know this and they see this, but they do not, they're not really thinking that they can do it themselves. There's a lot of people who are doing that with Amazon businesses. Like I get bombarded. I have tons of people, big investors who have deep pockets and like, Ashley, we're looking for someone that has an Amazon business mm -hmm. that's doing about 150,000, that there's you know, it's a pretty good hole in the market. They have a good idea about their branding and what they're doing, but they haven't totally, you know, they haven't landed that yet, but they're ready to exit. We want to buy them. Awesome. So I get that a lot. Um, but a lot of the times when I'm speaking to sellers, they haven't created the foundation yeah. or the paperwork, right? They haven't organized themselves. They don't have standard operating procedures. They don't have any of that. And if they you don't have, have that, one, they just have a one target that is profit. And they doesn't even seem like where that profit is going to come. So there's a lot of, lot of, lot of work is needed. Like I'm also owning an agency, like I'm the CEO of ecommanagers.com. So I also um, need to make sure that like we have the strong foundations and we have a proper team and stuff like that to set, to help the Amazon uh, sellers as much, much as we can. So this is the like uh, whole interview and uh, thank you so much Ashley for uh, being on the show and uh, it's a really, really pleasure and honor for me uh, like you are on the show. And uh, although I have a lot of, lot of questions for you and we will try to make another uh, episode with you as soon as possible. So we can get more information for the Amazon sellers who are struggling uh, with, uh, with their businesses. And once again, thank you so much for coming to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm so excited to see what this uh, Black Friday Cyber Money is going to do for all of your clients and the students and everyone who's listening, right? There's lots of stuff out there to help people get the job done. And so listen, like you get all the information right here, everybody. You got it. You're good to go. <laughs> Bye for now, Ashley. Thank you so Bye. much. For the